On an archaeological dig along the route of HS2, archaeologists have uncovered signs of occupation from the prehistoric to the 19th century. Early excavations revealed signs of Bronze Age, Iron Age and Roman people, but what archaeologists didn't expect to find were the well-preserved remains of an extensive Elizabethan garden. With comparisons to Kenilworth Castle and even Hampton Court Palace, our team of archaeologists led by Wessex Archaeology have revealed ornamental Elizabethan gardens of national significance. So join me as we explore these tremendous gardens and the aristocratic families who walked in them as we uncover the history of Colesall's past. Hi Paul, uh, we're on the site now of Colesall. Could you tell me a little bit more about why we're here today? We're on the site we now know of Colesall Manor, uh, which uh, stood, a great house stood until about 1800. But quite how long there had been a house on the site, we're only now discovering. Uh, Wessex archeology span came here six months ago or so because on air photographs, we could see what appeared to be an eight-sided moat but we've got nothing like that anywhere else in England. So quite what it represented was anybody's guess. But when we got into the site, what we found was that that moat was dug around the site of Colesill Manor, where the Lord of the Manor lived at Colesill in about 1600. Uh, and it surrounded his house and it was a big site. The, the interior of the moat is about 100 metres from side to side. Big eight-sided moat around it. Um, and within that, apart from the house, Wessex found the remains of very, very well-preserved formal gardens. And did we know that these gardens were even going to be here? Not at all, not at all. It's a remarkably poorly documented site, and that's one of the great frustrations, actually. We've got three or four illustrations from about 1800, right at the end of the site's life, showing the house from a couple of sides, and we get a glimpse of a part of the garden with two garden pavilions. Um, but otherwise, there are no written accounts Nobody that said, said, I came to see Mr. Digby's wonderful gardens near Coles Hill yesterday. We haven't got financial accounts for the garden's construction. We haven't got maps and plans, which so often you get for great gardens like this, absolutely nothing. So the answers have had to come from the archeology span itself. So just how special is the archeology span on this site? Because it looks absolutely fantastic. It's quite exceptional. I've been involved in archeology span for almost 50 years now, and I've never known a site like it. Why is that? Two reasons. Firstly, we've got this, this phase, this period, with the construction of an eight-sided moat around a house, about 1600. And the, the, the family records, the genealogy, suggests that the money for the construction of that great site and the enormous gardens associated with it came from the marriage of Sir Robert Digby, who was then the head of the family, with one of the wealthiest women in Ireland a lady called Letice, uh, and we suspect that it was the, the dowry, the money that she brought to the family that uh, enabled the construction of the octagonal moat, the Great Gardens, presumably a new house within, um, something that proclaimed Sir Robert Digby's new status in the West Midlands. Garden excavations of this scale in England, and where we've had this quality of preservation, I can only think of three other examples that compares with Coles Hill. There was Hampton Court Palace, there was Kirby Hall in Northamptonshire and there was Kenilworth Castle in Warwickshire, not so very far away. 
This is as big as any of those, and frankly, the quality of preservation here is actually better. And that says how special these excavations are.